guys, welcome back to another video here from the Offcut Garage in <laughs> in sunny hot Australia. Look at this weather. Okay, it's a bit cloudy, a bit cloudy, but still we've got like 180 amps outside. It is insane. So much solar power. Is this camera dirty? Okay guys, in today's video we want to have a quick look at the VE Smart Network from Victron and what it actually does, what it is, what it what it can do. If you have seen my last video, I had some issues with the solar charge controllers because I took them out of the VE Smart Network and also disabled the DVCC for these solar charge controllers as per advice from people out there and it created total chaos with my solar charge controllers. And since I have connected them again to the VE Smart Network, everything is good again. They are working synchronized, they are charging perfectly fine my battery, and they're getting the right information from the smart shunt in the battery shelf here. And there's a lot of discussion if you should set up the VE Smart Network, if you have DVCC enabled, or if you have a smart BMS connected to your system, should you still connect your solar charge controllers via the Victron Smart Bluetooth VE Smart Network? It is a Bluetooth network. So we want to talk about this here in the video as well. But here in the first step, I want to show you how to set up the VE Smart Network in the Victron system, how to connect your solar charge controllers and other devices to this network and what it actually does. Okay, let's get right into it. Is it too dark here? First of all, what do you need to set up a VE Smart Network? So you need at least one solar charge controller and then as a second device, either another solar charge controller or the smart shunt or a battery monitor like the BMV. Oh, in, in my case, we have four solar charge controllers and the, and the smart shunt, there it is. There's the smart shunt and the smart shunt. And we want to connect them all into a VE smart network now. So they all work together nicely. So we have now connected with a Victron Connect app on the mobile phone and we can see the big shed, the carport, the east roof and down here is the west roof as well. The pool fence is not in this system here, this is a totally different solar system but it shows up in the list but we don't want to have this one in our Bluetooth network at all. So I'm going to the smart shunt first, it connects via Bluetooth and there's actually an update available. Okay, okay, let's see if we can skip that. So we go down here to the VE Smart Network. We click on Join Existing and we go to the Off-Grid Garage, in my case, Network. Okay, this has now worked. And you can already see the Smart Shunt is now transmitting battery voltage sense and battery current sense to this network and all other connected devices will now receive these two parameters from the smart shunt directly. So regardless how far your solar charge controllers are away from the battery, they will get the correct reading from the smart shunt which sits fairly close to your battery. Okay, let's go back. Let's go into our big shed. And we go to our VE smart network, join existing, we join the off-grid garage network, waiting for it. There we got the green tick. And now the big shed gets actually the correct voltage from the smart shunt already. Yeah. It says here using external battery current sense from smart shunt. Okay, next one is the carport. Okay, go in here. The smart network. Join existing, off-grid garage. There we go. And now it also says there is a synchronizing charging happening. So these two solar charge controllers, they act as one. They make one of them the master and whatever the master tells the other ones, they will follow. And we don't know which one is the master, so we have to find out later by changing the settings and see if the other one's following. If they are not following, this is not the master. So we keep trying the other solar charge controllers until we find it where the others follow. And then we know it's the master. It's not too important. It's more important for me here in the off-grid garage because I'm doing a lot of testing and I can quickly change the parameters on all solar charge controllers by just 
for example, rising the voltage in the master and all the other solar charge controllers will follow these settings. So this is a very handy feature. Okay, and this is charge controller number three, which is joining right now. Synchronized charging and the west roof controller as the last one. All right, and this is our VE Smart Network, the off grid garage. Smart shunt, carport, big shed, east roof, and west roof controller. They are all combined, they are all sharing the information now and acting as one controller. So if one, for example, so if, if the master goes to float, the other one will follow and go to float as well. All right, and this is basically everything we have to do. So we have now successfully connected all our solar charge controllers to the VE Smart Network. How can we tell it's working actually? Well, you have to go into your device list in your local device list. So you have to con have to be connected via Bluetooth to your solar charge controllers. It doesn't work if you select VRM and connect through the remote console via VRM. It doesn't show you any VE Smart Network features then. So click on the local tab, select any of your solar charge controllers, for example, the East Roof. It now connects via Bluetooth. And here in the top right hand corner, you can see this little symbol layer for the VE Smart Network. So if you click on this, it says VE Smart Networking. This product is configured for VE Smart Networking and is receiving the following data from the network. Battery voltage, battery temperature. Synchronized charging is active and charge data is shared between same type chargers on the network. And you also have these additional information here on the screen, network total power. This gives you the total power input from all solar charge controllers at the moment. So the, the East Roof does 1.2 kilowatts, but all in total we are making 4.7 kilowatts. So this is part of the VE smart network now and all the shared information these devices get. So make sure all solar charge controllers have the same settings. This is again just a second layer of safety. The DVCC is still turned on in my case and I have limited my charge current into the battery to 200 amps. But this also includes the DC loads I have on my system. So if I connect another inverter to the system, which is not a Victron one, this load is then included in the 200 amps as well. But apart from that, I haven't turned on anything else at all. Everything else is turned off. I don't need anything else because this communication is all done via the Victron Smart Network now. So the synchronization happens in the Victron Smart Shunt if the voltage is above 55.1 volts for three minutes and the current needs to be under I think it's 15 amps or so. So if all these three requirements are met, it will then reset to 100%. And there's also written documentation from Victron Energy for the VE Smart Network available online. It explains exactly what VE Smart Network is, how to use it, when to use it, and what the limitations are. Interestingly, it doesn't say with any word in this documentation that you should not turn on the VE Smart Network if you have DVCC installed, if you have an ESS system or any other configuration which interferes with the pairing of the solar charge controllers and the smart shunt. So you're getting information from different, from different sources into your system. But for example, here it says for chargers that are already connected and synchronized over VE CAN, pairing them in a VE smart network is not necessary. In case they are paired, this pairing will be ignored. So it doesn't say it will interfere with anything you have set up. It doesn't say you shouldn't do this. In question five, we can read that if you have DVCC turned on the distributed voltage and current control, it will take this information coming from the DVCC in favor over the smart network. So it won't use any information coming from the Bluetooth network in this case. But it sorts this out itself. It doesn't interfere with anything. You can always set up this Bluetooth smart network. It should not cause any trouble according to the documentation. 
And in this document, it basically shows you in step by step again how to add your solar charge controllers to the VE Smart Network, how to add your smart shunt, how to add your battery monitor, your BMV. Basically the same what I have just shown you here in the video is here in the document as well. If you want a written copy of that, I link this down below under the video as well as on my website. It is the official documentation from Victron Energy. Okay guys, so far this little tutorial from today, adding all my solar charge controllers and the smart shunt again into the VE smart network, the Bluetooth network, so they're all synchronized, all four solar charge controllers acting as one controller, getting the information from the smart shunt sitting here on the battery shelf, regardless the voltage drop in between, and everything seems to work perfectly fine. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. No, 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 no. Where are you going? No, 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 no. Ah. Uh -huh. Where are you? Where are you? Hey Froggy, Froggy come on, don't, ah, uh, shit.